The railways are the arteries of industrial Britain's trade. Day and night they work, feeding her factories, feeding her people. efficient operation of British railways, many factors play their part. There are the great marshalling yards where goods trains are made up rapidly but dispatch all over the country, this one being the largest in Europe. In developing dock facilities for the import and export trades, the railways have become the greatest dock owners in the world. They have provided an enormous fleet of rolling stock to satisfy the infinite demands of a great nation. They have built up an organization for the collection and delivery of goods to every town and village in the country. All these and many other activities must be undertaken by the railways if they are to carry out the services required by the nation. But ultimately, it is upon the engines that any railway system must depend for efficiency and economy of operation. At that date, British engineers have been designing engines for railways all over the world, built by workmen with this great tradition of engine building behind them. To make the frame or chassis on which an engine stands, thick steel plate is cut by oxyacetylene burners, shaped and drilled. While the sides of the frame are being burnished, finished off, other flat steel plates are bent by the pressure of hydraulic rollers, slowly curved to form the circular boiler plates. In the forge, ingots of steel are being heated to a white heat for forging into connecting and coupling rods, crankshafts and other parts of the power transmission. white hot metal, the forging of a connecting rod is ready for machining. In the boiler shop, the boiler plate, not long ago a flat sheet of steel, is almost completed. The boiler plates are assembled. The frame of the firebox attached to the boiler. Onto this frame is fitted the firebox cover. Then the whole assembly is joined by riveting. Firebox and boiler, the power plant of the engine, are nearly complete. In the machine shop are being made the component parts that will transfer that power to the driving wheels, the cylinder blocks, the pistons that will fit into them, the coupling rod forging is being drilled, and the complicated valve gear is being ground.
A space has been cleared in the assembly shop, ready for the laying of the frame, like the laying of a ship's keel. these boiler components have been fitted, then the completed boiler, the firebox, the driver's cab, already mounted on the chassis, are dropped onto the driving wheels and bogey. is ready. British engineers built the first locomotive over a hundred years ago. British skill and British steel have made our engines preeminent throughout the world. This is the lesson of a century's experience.